All right, YouTube, I am happy to report that uh, embarrassing Mayor Chris Loris has been ousted by David Allaire, and it wasn't even close. It was a margin of 700 votes, uh, which meant that <laughs> Allaire won with more than 50%. Loris was down in the 30s. Um, this is the individual, Chris Loris, the outgoing, uh, defeated incumbent, who basically embarrassed our entire uh, town with his Syrian refugee crap. Of course, met most people in the world, eh, they don't know where the hell Rutland is. They barely know, in many cases, where Vermont is. A lot of people can't find Vermont on a map. We're kind of uh, insignificant geographically, let's face it. But a lot of people came to know where Rutland was, um, specifically because of our idiot mayor. Now, it wasn't even in many people's minds, as far as I can judge, having spoken with others. It wasn't about the concept of bringing Syrian refugees here that caused them to, to vote against Loris. It was about the fact that he never told anybody about his plans. He didn't tell the population. He didn't tell the aldermen. He d was dismissive of people who criticized him for that fact. He was also very dismissive of people who wanted a direct vote on whether it should happen or not. Now, here's the secret. The people of Rutland probably would have re-elected Loris and probably would have voted in favor of such a plan if he had simply put it before the general population. Um, I think you'd find that if he was so proud of this idea, if he thought it was such a great idea for our economy, for our culture, for our demographics, whatever the hell his excuse was on any given day, he should have trotted that plan out before the entire population of the Rutland region. He should have made his case. He should have allowed the alderman to weigh in, give him advice, give him constructive criticism, and then proceeded with a vote, and he probably would have prevailed. People would have, uh, you know, at the very least, he probably would have been reelected anyway, because it wouldn't have been really a major issue uh, in this election that happened yesterday. Instead, he sunk his own career. And what I think happened is he's a career politician, or was, <laughs> until, of course, last night, and I'm very, very happy about that fact career politician. He no longer felt he was answerable to the general public. He no longer felt like he had a responsibility to tell people what was going on or to ask their permission. He just thought of himself as big bad mayor because he had been reelected many times. As a result, he looked. And I think that the ultimate thing was this. I think he, like many others, expected Hillary Clinton to win the election. So he wanted to grandstand. He, he wanted to say, oh yeah, Vermont land of progressivism and refugees and stuff like that. Look what we did. Um, you know, the election wasn't even over. We took these refugees in. Now we deserve a kickback. Oh, you know, Hillary sends some millions our way for our, our pothole problem or something like that. I don't think he expected Trump to win because it was with great and mystical speed with which Loris dismantled his own program after just two Syrian refugee families arrived as soon as Trump won. When Trump mentioned sanctuary cities and sanctuary states losing funding, he immediately shuttered his own program, refused to defend it. He, he bowed knee to Trump, essentially. I don't think he expected to have to do that. I think he expected to face backlash from the community, to be able to get up on a national stage when Hillary won, explain his views, and thus get massive backing from the Democratic establishment. That's what I think happened. His plan failed, he's been ousted, David Allaire is now our mayor. And I'm happy with that. That was the ultimate problem for many people. It was about transparency, not the uh, refugees themselves. I think a lot of people, if, if you were watching the lamestream news, in regards to this event, and you don't know anything about Rutland or even in many cases Vermont, what you saw and what people here saw wasn't the same. What you saw is, oh, Rutland sharply divided along lines of should we or should we not admit a bunch of refugees? Will, will the bigots prevail, essentially, if you were listening to MSNBC or something like that? Or will the glorious winged idiot mayor Loris prevail in his just crusade to help these poor people? But what you saw inside of Rutland, specifically within uh, the county itself, was is it or is it not acceptable that the mayor dreamed up this plan and didn't bother telling anybody about it? It was about transparency, not fundamentally about the refugees themselves. It was about how he handled the situation. That's why he's gone. If this had just been a partisan debate over whether it is or is not a good idea, but he had put it before a vote, whether it passed or not, 
or he had at least told people in advance and consulted the aldermen, he probably would still be our mayor right now. Instead, he got canned. Good riddance. Hopefully he never enters politics again. And he just looks like the sort of person who's perpetually pained. Like a perpetually whiny individual. And, uh, yeah, he, he probably should have listened to those of us who thought, yeah, this might be a little bit of a problem when he runs again. Now, it wasn't entirely clear that he was going to lose, by the way, because you had multiple viable challengers, both of which, Allaire and, and Coppinger, uh, frequently mentioned this problem uh, with the refugees, and both from, again, that perspective of transparency, of the, of the city, the municipal government being transparent in its actions, caring about the opinions of the population as opposed to being autocratic in nature. Not so much, oh, well, we don't need these refugees here, they'll dirty up our community or something. Then people looked around, I think, <clears throat> and they saw we have continuous budgeting problems. Not just in the city of Rutland, Rutland Town has problems, West Rutland has problems, North Clarendon has problems, Menden has problems, the whole area has problems. We've gone in the last 10 years, the same period in which Loris has been mayor, by the way, we've gone from a, a quiet community where things were at more or less equilibrium. It, there was growth, slow growth, yeah, but it was there. Uh, we did have jobs. Our mall wasn't completely abandoned. There weren't so many potholes in the roads and cracked sidewalks and so forth. To essentially a haven for opiate addiction and meth heads, um, with constant problems funding its own police force, with constant problems funding its fire department, with an increasingly non-transparent mayor uh, that we just ousted, thankfully. It's the first step in solving these problems. We have continuous budget shortfalls, an abandoned mall, a downtown that took a decade to recover. It's finally back now, but you know, it could go at any time, let's face it. We still have empty business fronts all over the city. We still have empty homes. We still have many problems in our community. We have homeless bums standing outside uh, of Walmart all day begging for spare change. And Loris looked at the situation and said, ah, fuck all that, I can solve it just by bringing 100 people here who will need financial assistance from the city for a very long time. Somehow this is a good idea because, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, it helps a little bit of our demographic problems. What he did was he identified the problems, but he, pro he proposed the wrong solution. I don't think that it would have helped us. If he had gone forth, if, if Hillary had won, and in an alternate scenario, Hillary wins, we get 100 refugees, maybe we get 1,000 new refugees down the line or something like that, it would not have solved our problems as a community. It wouldn't have helped. You can call it moral, you can call it just, you can say that it helps some problems a little bit, but you can't say that's going to fix the potholes. You can't say that's going to fix the sidewalks. It's not going to fix the traffic lights. It's not going to fix the opiate epidemic. It has no effect on these things. But the icing on the cake had nothing to do with the refugees themselves. That debate was had at the national level in regards to our community. As a person who lives in the Rutland community, as a person who lives in this area, I can say there was a huge difference by how you generally perceived what was going on here. Your perception of Rutland is wrong. Your perception of Rutland is small, quiet, nearly all-white community of bigots argue over whether they do or do not want a little bit of uh, cultural enrichment or something like that. Will we stand with the glorious mayor or with the evil Nazis that you imagine probably walk around our streets with baseball bats? That's not what happened here. What happened is that an ailing community had to determine whether they wanted to keep a mayor who apparently did not value our opinions, who didn't care about what people thought about the issue and who stood there and acted like they were evil, like there was something wrong with many people within his own community, his own constituents, if they opposed a plan that he technically should not have been enacting without at least consulting the aldermen. That's what it boiled down to. I'm glad he's gone. He will never be the mayor of this city again, thankfully. Uh, it got to the point. Things were so fucked up, I thought about running myself. And I'm like, oh, that would take time out of YouTubing and writing books, so who cares? Uh, maybe in the future. It'd be funny. You know, I could stand up there and say, oh, yeah, yeah, think of all the tourism. People all over the world know about me, so maybe they'll come here to see, like, I'll build a YouTube studio or something like that. I'll put it in a shit shack. I'll literally have an oversized outhouse 
<laughs> somewhere in the middle of the city the Wi-Fi connection and make videos there just as a tourist gig or something like that It'd be really really funny to see you know uh, we should uh, let's see we should put up a statue of Calvin Coolidge that'd be a good proposal I don't know how we'd pay for it maybe we can tear up all the uh, loose pavement all the loose uh, uh, tiles in our sidewalks and we can just sort of smash them together and then like do something to it. we can compact it into a statue make it cheaper because we're gonna have to replace those at some point Let's face it, we got a lot of elderly people in our community that can't even use the sidewalks without tripping and breaking a hip at this point. Yeah, we've got some problems in Rutland. And none of those problems was, oh, skinheads and, and Muslims. No, the problem was we want our mayor to actually care about our opinions. If he decides to go ahead with it after at least pretending to care, even then he probably would have been reelected. But he completely shut them out. He, would, he didn't even want to attend like a, a regular meet and greet sort of scenario where he stands there and listens to and addresses people's concerns. He didn't even want to do that. He didn't want to be challenged on this at all. He, in an autocratic fashion, he says, we will do this. I don't care what the aldermen think. I don't care what you little peasants think. Fuck yourselves. And by the way, vote for me in the, in the next mayoral election. Yes, that's a winning strategy. Now, is he going to run for like Bernie Sanders' empty Senate seat when Bernie Sanders retires? Or when he, you know, he strokes out from eating too much Ben and Jerry's? Now, vote for Christopher Loris for the Vermont State Senate. I promise to ignore you. That'll be his motto. So I'm glad he's gone. Uh, he was an embarrassment to our city. I imagine he qu probably lost quite a few actual real-life friends over this. People who he, d you know, he did more than just shake their hand. He was out there eating a hot dog with them a few weeks before that whole thing happened. And now <laughs> he can't even get the time of day. People pretend like he's a leper, like they don't even know who he is. And so Alaire has been elected. Honestly, I liked Coppinger better. He's the only one who appeared to have a greater grasp of economics, which our, uh, our region desperately needs. But at the same time, uh, Alaire, at the very least, he, he for a while, because he's not an incumbent, he's a new political figure within Rutland, at least he has to you know, care about what people think short term. Of course, this is the problem with long-term incumbents. There's a higher and higher risk that they begin uh, ignoring people within their constituency. That's about all. Peace out.